I almost lost my life in this whole ordeal. 2005, Barrio Azteca went to war with the Border Brothers. Two gangs, they're along the border, very, very organized and with strong cartel ties. Not just on the streets, but they, it spilled into the federal system. Paisas, a Mexican organization inside the feds, went to war with the Aztecas. Mexicans killing Mexicans. And for what? Not even the street, because this is all inside federal prison. Let's get into this video. KB got a hit. It's Sean Frazier. Came in the game without a dime to my name. Uh -huh. Got some pounds in the change. Uh -huh. Got some pounds in the change. Uh -huh. Used to hang with killers who would Pow. let it bang. Yeah. Who would Pow. let it bang? Yeah. Who would Pow. let it bang? Yeah. Changing up the script. Had to change the way that I live. Uh -huh. Had to change the way that I build. No more powder in them seals. Uh -huh. No more stacking up them kills. Uh -huh. Gotta take care of my kids. Uh -huh. Wasn't easy paying no bills. I could feel the weight of my chest. Uh -huh. I gave it all my best. Uh -huh. Only pounds I move when I bitch. Yeah. Only pounds I move when I live. Yeah. Yeah. I got back up and I flex. Yeah. I got tired of hitting that deck. Feeling bullets with my head, savage tattoo on my face. Gotta thank God for His grace. Make time for my bank. Gotta take time when I pray. Legal money all in my bank. I ain't got time to be fake. Took the gang all across state. Try to help. YouTube. We're live. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. Hey, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza. You already know what time it is. Suance la Suburban. Let's get this video on the road. What's up, guys? Welcome to the episode of Wrong Strong. JC is your host. <laughs> From 2001, a lot of federal private prisons were being built alongside Arizona, New Mexico, California. But these are privately owned. They're CCAs. And the reason why they built them is because there was a lot of gangs that needed to be separated now. Like the Texas Syndicate, gangs from California, from Arizona, had to be separated from, from others and it was getting a little bit out of control. I ended up getting sent to a unit where I want to say about 70% of the people there were either border brothers or they just lived in the area and were from that part of town that they just rode together. They were, you know, paisas Mexicans, but they rode together. And they were fucking deep, they were deep. There was maybe four Americans together with me and we were in this unit. We had one table, one TV. They had the other two TVs and the tables. They were deep, there was a lot of them. But it started to get to the point where like they were almost being like like bullies. And I get along. 99% of the time I could get along with pretty much any kind of race, anybody. You know what I mean? I mean unless you're like, we're talking about that. Get along with anybody. But they were controlling the extra food. They were controlling the Kool-Aid. They were controlling the lines to get the hygiene all that shit and since they had all their people as workers they were controlling everything and in, and in prison when you're doing this it means a lot it goes a long ways because there's a lot of people that are hungry there's a lot of people that don't have money there's a lot of people that need extra stuff if you're really if you're ready to politic then you better be ready to like pull out your knife fight and all kinds of shit in there because they take that shit really serious in there and they ain't no joke, you know, just like just like Jay was saying, it ain't it ain't a joke, you know. I don't think people understand the severity it, it shocks your mind to see someone get stabbed thirty times and he's running from his life and screaming and you know it's it, it fucks you up. There's just things that you're not meant to you're not meant to see. So I went up to one of the guys, you know, one of the guys there that ran their car, but pretty much didn't like me. And we would uh, not, not see, I, I had a lot of things. Sometimes they would, uh, uh, you know, come and sit on the table and change the channel on the TV. And if you've been to prison, you, you know how serious this, this is, but because there were so many of them, you know, they thought they, get, they could get away with it. And I mean, they did because there was a lot of them. 
I said something and I'll, I'll never forget that day, man. I mean, it was crazy, but you know, I said something about the food, about the Kool-Aid, about the TV, about the table, and they were like, oh, okay. Yeah, they were like, we'll handle it. And I was like, all right. So I didn't think nothing of it. They called yard and I was actually gonna stay in and clean my, my room and just, you know, do shit. I didn't feel like really going outside, but I said, fuck it. I'm gonna go outside. Walk outside. I need some sun. You know, I, I just, I, I was fucking stressed. I'm standing on the, on the basketball court watch, watching the game, you know, and it's a high security facility because they house a lot of, you know, undercover drug lords that kind of slip through the cracks, fucking. A lot of workers for the cartel that get caught with the suitcases on their backs, uh, smugglers, coyotes, a lot of underground people that look like they're nobodies, but they're somebodies, you know, so it's, it's, it's high security, so very close quarters. So I'm watching the game, there's guys running around in circles around the gate, there's some guys working out, doing pull-ups, push-ups, dips, and I'm just watching the game, man. All of a sudden, I, I feel a crack in my head so fucking hard that when I when I closed my mouth pretty much to take the impact I cracked some of my teeth they hit me with a rock the size of my head in a sock while my back was turned and when he hit me I went to go fall down because it, it was it was it was a hard hit I mean my whole fucking head just split open. Um, but I kept saying to myself, nah, don't fall down, don't fall down. Because if, if you've been to prison, you've seen this happen before. If you fall down, I mean, that's where, that's where they kill you. That's where they pretty much stab you to fucking death. And I, just, I stood up and I grabbed, I grabbed one of them that was on my left side and I did the good old fish hook on his ass. You know, I stuck it in his cheek and I just pulled it and I dragged them with me. Well, I must have had like six or seven guys on me. They were, they were hitting me with, you know, socks and, and rocks and I was bleeding everywhere. There was blood all over my face, my, my, my body, everywhere. And I just kept dragging that dude to the gate because in prison, man, the COs, the COs don't, don't get there until like it's cleanup time. Like, after everybody's already stabbed and done, that's when they get there. So I made it my my job, my point to get to the gate. I said, "Fuck it, I'm not I'm not gonna die here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go here." So I just kept on walking, man, walking, and I was taking the hits, and I was just dragging dude with me. He was screaming because his whole cheek pretty much ripped in half. And I get to the gate. The seals are running in. You know, the sergeant, the white shirts. They open the gate. They pull me out. They cuff me, and they start walking me to uh, medical. The sergeant's talking to me on the way there, and he was like, for sure, we thought that you were dead because that hit with the rock in your, on your head was so loud that we heard it in the camera room. Like, that's how loud it was. And, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, man. My head was like fucking like a pumpkin. It was like huge and I was bleeding everywhere. Um, it's that scar that I have in the back of my head. And, and you know, it took me to go see the nurse and after I seen the nurse, they, they gave me ibuprofen. I mean, it's like a joke in there. They give you ibuprofen for everything. You know, you, you got a hernia, ibuprofen. You got a headache, ibuprofen. You got a skin rash, ibuprofen. You know, it's a joke in there. They give you ibuprofen for everything. and. They sent me straight to SAG. They sent me to the home, put me under investigation. And, you know, I, I sat there, God knows with, with what, what kind of fucking brain injury or, or, or what, you know? And these private prisons, the, the way that they work is they try to minimize the amount of, of work that they have to do with these gangs. So what they try to do is lock everybody up in, in special units where it's like one unit where they have all the same ones and, and and that's how they do it but sometimes people slip through the cracks i sat there and i tried to get out you know what the white shirts um 
made it impossible for me pretty much put me under investigation after my days were done they would do it again and I pretty much sat there until I got sentenced when I was getting shipped out they pulled out two MS 13s and two Barrio Aztecas they cuffed us you know the box everything you know shackles everything and they started moving us like I said in these private prisons they try to separate everybody as much as they can and especially people that have big beefs like the Aztecas, Texas Syndicate, stuff like that. They try to, uh, you know, isolate them a lot. Well, as soon as we're getting ready to get into onto the bus, we're done, we're getting shipped. We're already done, sentenced, we're out of here. We're, we're going to the pen where they're gonna send us to and that's it, right? <laughs> All right, let me tell you something, man. Prison is a very, very dangerous place. And there's a high, high possibility that you won't make it out. It's very, very high. So I suggest that if you really don't want to go through that or see things like that, that you get your shit together. Because all it takes is a second for the staff to fuck up and your whole life could be gone. Just like what happened to me. We were walking to the door. One of the paisas took off on one of the Aztecas in front. These guys were classified gang members that needed to be separated from everybody else. I wasn't, I was in the hole under investigation. They start moving everybody into single cells and stuff like that. But because my paperwork said that I was just under investigation. I was in a separate, separate T or whatever they fucking call that shit. They pulled me, they put me in a bullpen with like a hundred motherfuckers, right? After I just had beef with these motherfuckers in the unit, they put me in a fucking bullpen with my hands cuffed, the black box and my feet shackled like a fucking Christmas present. <laughs> So, I had to do what I had to do because if you've been to prison, you know that. People think that the system is, is big or that if you go through time in, in New York and you're from Cali, nobody's ever gonna recognize you. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. The federal system is a web of kites, lines, everything. Everybody, anybody knows where you're at. And trust me, you'll see people in the system over and over again on different states. So they put me into this bullpen. So I say game on, game face. I gotta look the meanest, the meanest, the ugliest I can. I gotta swole up. Just like the, the, what the streets taught me. Camouflage. I played it cool. I walked all the way to the back and sat down like I wasn't afraid of shit. I mean, let's be honest, if they would have taken off on me, it, it would have been game over for me. I sat there just looking mean and ugly. I was shitting in my pants though. <laughs> and I looked to the right where the toilet's at and there was one of the motherfuckers that was there in the unit that did that shit to me. So I played it off cool, I didn't even get up or nothing, I just sat there, he, he got up, walked over to me, and was like, hey, like, on my side, we're good, man. He's like, you took that, didn't say nothing. He's like, you know, I'm good with you. I was like, I'm good, man. But that moment right there, I could have had a little ounce of pride or, or whatever you want to call it. Even though I really wouldn't have been able to do shit because I was all cuffed up and everything. But at the same time, he could have said something because everybody in that fucking whole prison wrote together. They were either, they were either paisas or were Aztecas or Border Brothers. At the end of the day, they were all Mexican, so they all wrote together. So 
He could have also said something and I could have got my wig split again. Again. Let me tell you guys, I've survived a lot of attacks on the streets and in prison. Been stabbed multiple times. Been beat up lots of times and laid out a couple times. Just like I've laid out people and I've, I've done bad stuff. But prison is no joke. And a lot of people lose their life, not just in time, but also because of the pride and, and all having to prove something that got you there in the first place. I share my stories because honestly, at the end of the day, I don't want nobody to go through what I went through. It took me a lot of years to kind of like build myself and actually get over my whole traumas and everything that happened to me throughout my life. I spent 17 years in and out of prison. A small life. I wouldn't wish that upon even my worst enemy. So today, I just say, man, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you don't have one life to live. Live it out here, man. Free. Drug free. Gang free. Prison free. Just free, man. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.